So you're running some services at home and you don't want to expose them publicly. Maybe this is because you don't want to take the risk, you don't have authentication set up, or they just don't need to be exposed publicly. And you've been thinking about setting up a VPN, but you really don't know where to start. And you're not sure where this VPN should live. Should it live on existing hardware like your router, or should it live within your existing infrastructure? And then you have to choose your VPN server. Well here, I'll make it easy for you. Let's check out WireGarden. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about WireGuard, the new hotness in VPN security. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you want to continue the conversation about setting up a VPN there, we can. So let's talk about setting up WireGuard. So we know you have choices for a VPN server. Up until recently, one of the most popular ones has been OpenVPN, and that's supported on many devices, whether they be virtual, physical, or even containers. And many hardware devices have this service built into them, and it's been relatively easy to set up. But recently, there's a new VPN server in town, and it's called WireGuard. WireGuard aims to be easy to use. A VPN connection is made by exchanging very simple public keys, and there's no connections or processes to worry about. It uses some of the most advanced cryptography that's out there and aims to be secure by having a minimal attack surface. And it aims to be fast by using high-speed cryptography. And since Linux kernel 5.6, WireGuard now lives inside of Linux. And so now you're thinking to yourself, well, how do I get started now? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. So today, in this video, we're gonna set up WireGuard. We'll start by configuring it with Docker, and then we'll move on to something called Rancher. If you need help setting this up, I've got a complete tutorial on how to get Docker, Rancher, and Kubernetes up and going. It'll have you up and running in a couple of minutes. But if you wanna run plain old Docker or even Portainer, that's fine too. So with that out of the way, let's get started. First, we'll want to go out to linuxserver.io. Linuxserver.io manages a lot of my favorite Docker images. Once here, you'll want to find WireGuard. And here are the commands if you're using Docker. First, we're going to call docker create, and this is going to create our Docker container. Next, we'll use the argument of name, and this is just giving our container a name. Next, we'll need to give this container some capabilities. So we'll need to add net admin and sys module. Then we're going to pass in some environment variables. The first is PUID and PGID. And these are needed for permissions. And these should be set to the Docker user that we're going to use. And I'll show you how to get these here in a second. The next environment variable, tz, that's our time zone. The next environment variable is server URL. And here we'll put our external DNS name. Now, this is optional and you can use an IP address, but I highly recommend setting up a DNS name for this. Next, we'll set server port, and the default is 51820, and this is the external port for the Docker host. The next one is peers, and this is how many peers we want to set up, and this is also how many configs will be generated. Next is peers DNS, and this is the DNS that the clients will use. Next is internal underscore subnet. And this is the internal subnet that the clients will use. The next is P for publishing ports. And here we're only going to expose the UDP port of 51820. Next, we're going to mount two volumes. The first is a path to our config. And the second is to lib modules. Next is syscontrol. And these are syscontrol options. And next is restart and must stop. And so this is going to restart the container if it starts crashing. And last, linuxserver.io slash WireGuard is the Docker image we're going to use. And so if you were using plain old Docker, you could copy and paste this command, make a few tweaks, and have WireGuard up and running in just a couple of minutes. But we're gonna move on to configuring this in Rancher, and then after that, we'll configure our clients and get connected. So once we're in our Rancher server, we'll go to global cluster, default cluster, and let's deploy a new workload. And now let's translate this Docker file to a Kubernetes workload. So first we'll name it WireGuard. Next we need to add some capabilities. So let's go into show advanced options. Then we'll go into networking. Then we'll expand security. And in here, we'll want to find netadmin and sysmodule. Now you'll want to make sure that both of these are selected. So if you're on Windows, you need to hold down control. And if you're on Mac, you'll need to hold down command. But you should have both of these capabilities selected. Now let's add some environment variables. So we'll add a variable. I've added both PUID and PGID. And the way that we get these is by going into our Rancher server. So let's SSH into there. Once you SSH in, it's as simple as typing ID. And you want to be sure that you're SSHing in with your Docker account. But in my case, my UID and my PIG are both 1001. Next, we'll want to set TZ or our time zone. And mine is America slash Chicago. Next is our server URL. And this should be the domain name that you're going to use for your clients to contact this server on. Now, if you don't list one here, you can use IP address. 
but you'll want to remove this environment variable. But if you do use server URL here, you'll want to make sure your DNS name is set up already. Next is server port, and we're going to use 51820. Next is how many peers we're going to set up. I'm just going to set one for now for me. Next is our peers DNS, and this is the DNS that our peers will use when they connect. I'm going to keep it at auto. Next is the internal subnet to use. I'm going with the default of 10.13.13.0. Next we'll need to publish some ports. Here I'm just going to name the port WireGuard, and I chose 51820 on the inside and the outside, and I made sure to make it a host port. Another thing to check too is to be sure that this is UDP. If you set it to TCP, it won't work. Next we'll need to map a couple of volumes. Before we do, let's create a folder on our server so that we can map a volume to it. So back in our server, I created a folder called WireGuard. And you can see this lives at slash home slash techno 10 slash WireGuard. And now let's map our volumes. So I'm going to add my volume. I'm going to buy mount a directory from a node because I created that folder on the node. But if you created this somewhere else, feel free to choose another option. So here I named the volume WireGuard config. The path on node was the path we just found. And the path within the container is slash config. So let's create another one. So add volume bind mount a directory from the node, and here I name the volume libmodules. And it's going to map to the path slash lib slash modules, and that's on the host and the inside of that container. Another thing I like to set is our scaling and upgrade policy. Here, I typically choose kill all pods, then start new. Then we need to set our Docker image. We'll set this to Linux server slash WireGuard. Okay, and if everything looks good, we can start this up, and it looks like it's up and running. Let's check the logs. And if we look at the logs, we can see this gigantic QR code. This is a QR code that we can use for our peers to configure our client. And you can also see here that we're using the internal DNS from Kubernetes. If you find you have a problem with that, you can set that to your internal DNS or an external DNS. Before we configure the client, there's one more thing we'll want to do. You want to be sure to port forward the UDP port of 51820 to your rancher server. And WireGuard's listening on that port because we configured that environment variable. But make sure that's set up before we proceed. And make sure the port's right. And make sure it's the UDP protocol. But things look pretty good so far, so let's set up our client. Now the client's available on almost any platform you can think of. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac OS, Linux, and even Windows. But I'm going to configure this using my iOS device. So we'll go into the App Store, we'll search for WireGuard, and here it is, and we'll download it. Okay, and before I open this, I'm going to disconnect from my Wi-Fi here so that I'm connected to data, so I can route through the public internet. Then we'll launch it. Okay, so let's add a tunnel. And now let's choose scan from QR code. Give access to our camera. Scan the QR code. Let's name it. And we will allow this. Okay, it added it, so let's connect. Okay, that, that was super fast. I don't know if I'm really connected now. Okay, if we look at our configuration, looks like I got an IP address. Shows the port. Shows DNS servers. Shows my key. It also shows the allowed IPs as well as the data sent. So it looks like we're connected. And let's see if we can access the internet. And we can, we're connected over VPN. And just to be straightforward with you, this is pretty complicated and I ran into lots of errors along the way. I noticed that iOS clients and Android clients need different settings. I also noticed that it's kind of unclear when you're connected. One thing that helped me troubleshoot my connection was actually running a utility within the Docker container. So if you exact into this container and you type wg, you should see an output of your clients. You'll want to pay attention to the peer here. And in here, you'll want to make sure that you have a handshake. You can see here my latest handshake was 1 minute and 10 seconds ago. This is a good place to start troubleshooting if you have issues. If you type in wg and you see your peer without a handshake, that means the client can't connect back to your Docker container. So that could be one of a couple things. It could be that you didn't set up external DNS properly. And if you did set it up properly, or you're just using your IP address, then it might mean that your port forwarding rules aren't working properly. You'll want to make sure that those two things are working before you start troubleshooting the client and the server. Then, if you're sure that both of those are correct, then you would run WG here and see the output. And also you would make sure that you see this handshake. If you do see a handshake and you don't have internet access or access to your local resources, you're not the only one. It seems like the internet is full of people having issues with WireGuard. Now that's not to say it's a bad client or bad service, it's just that I noticed a lot of issues out there. And a lot of people are running into some of the problems that I had. But hopefully this doesn't dissuade you from trying it out. WireGuard's not just gaining popularity because it's new, 
It's gaining popularity because of how quick, how modern, and how secure it is. And if you're looking for a quick weekend project, I highly recommend spinning it up and trying it out. So what do you think about WireGuard? How do you think it compares to something like OpenVPN? How do you think it compares when hopping networks? Let me know in the comments section below. And while you're in the comments, be sure to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on, my friends. Uh, bro, you look like Joseph Seed, <laughs> Far Cry 5. Oh, do I? All right, that's a new one. It's a new one. People usually say Johnny Depp. Like, every YouTube video is like, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp tech. Johnny is so weird, Johnny Depp's talking to me. <laughs> so that's a new one. I have to look it up. Joseph C to Far Cry 5. I like it. I like it. Is he a cool dude? <laughs> I'll take it. They wouldn't put him in a video game if he wasn't.